Joining us right now is head coach of the Lakeview Volleyball team, Heather Guthrie. Coach, how are we doing today? Hey, good. How are you? It's good to see you. And we've been we've been talking about you guys since the top of the show and how dominant Lakeview Volleyball has been over the years. Uh, how do you guys keep kind of coming at it and, and, and stay away from the complacency of the, the past year's dominance? Um, well, the girls just show up and they work hard every single day. Um, they take it very serious when they step into the gym. Um, we do a lot of lifting, a lot of conditioning to keep them healthy throughout the season. And, you know, a lot of the girls, almost all the girls play all year round. Um, a lot of them play at Infinity and they play at Thunder. So props to those clubs for keeping these girls in shape and keeping them loving the game of volleyball. And we've been talking to a couple of volleyball coaches already this year and the importance of club volleyball and how it's making the area of volleyball grow a little bit. You know, in the years past, we've seen our teams win a district and then just hit teams and regionals that are just flat out better than them because the, the volleyball in Canton and Maslin just seems to be at a different level. But we're seeing club volleyball in the area kind of change that and, and make the, the volleyball grow in the area a little bit. Mm hmm. I agree. Yeah. I mean, again, I think it's just the love of the sport that the girls have to have when they sh when they want to come. And, you know, them showing up and working hard and winning makes it a lot easier <laughs> to keep coming back every game, every day, every practice. So, yeah. <laughs> so you guys return a lot. You never want to diminish the impact of senior leadership, but you only lose two seniors, I believe, from last year's team. And you're yeah. returning so many uh, important key members of that team from last year. What are some of the prospects this year of, of Lakeview Volleyball? Um, well, yeah, we lost two seniors last year, um, Anna Peterson and Mara Krish. And, you know, we're going to miss them very much. Um, they've come to a couple open gyms just to say hi to the girls and play and say hi to us. So it's always nice to have them come back. Um, but we have a lot of girls returning this year again. Um, we have Carly Hahn, our senior, coming back as a right side uh, player. Our setter, Maggie Pavlansky, is coming back again. Um, Tara Lytle is coming back. Emma Schmader, Brooke Schneider, Maddie Bayes. I know I'm forgetting somebody. Sydney Peterson, Erica Giese. And then we have a huge freshman class coming in. And, you know, um, YSU, when we went to YSU and played at YSU, we threw a ton of the freshmen in um, on the varsity games. So we have a bunch of freshmen coming back uh, or coming in. Um, we have Reagan Price, who's a great great uh, hitter. Um, she's a big blocker, big, big, heavy arm. So um, and then we have Mallory Mylock. Um, she is a setter. She's going to be helping us out. Mara Schmader is going to be helping us out um, as a setter as well. And we have a ton of outside hitters and defensive specialists that are, that are freshmen that are going to be helping us out as well. Blessed with some riches. I mean, you talk <laughs> about the freshman class that you guys have and then all the people that you have returning. You can only put six people on the court at once. Mm -hmm. uh, that's probably got to be kind of devastating because you have, you know, multiple people that could probably just go out there and, and compete at the varsity level. Um, you, what are some goals this season for Lakeview Volleyball to keep improving? I mean, it's hard to imagine for, for the people that play you every year to say Lakeview Volleyball could get better. But what kind of things do you think that you watched from last year and you had discussions with your staff that we can get better at this and, and we have to really up our game in this in this point of the game to, to maybe make a, a deeper tournament run? Um, well, I know this year we really wanted to focus on ball control. Um, that's still something we work on every day. And, you know, we get better every single game by playing the teams that we play. Um, our conference this year is going to be really competitive. I think it's going to be the most competitive that it's been for a while, which is great. Um, we're excited to play those big teams this year again. Um, but I'm adding Nate Mylock to my staff this year. I have Lenny Lytle coming back as well, and she's great with the offensive uh, play. She loves working with our setters and our hitters. Um, you know, so she's coming back, which is great. Um, and she has eyes for the court. So whatever she sees, I try to <laughs> try to mimic her, but she knows more about that than I do. Um, and then I have Nate Mylock joining me this year. Um, and he brings a lot of inspirational, um, motivation to the girls. He helps, he gives them healthy competition. So we know that in the past, um, we haven't, the girls haven't really had to compete so much for their spots, but this year they have to compete. So, um, you know, we're really working on ball control and on any given night, I have three back row players that I can throw in in the libero spot and they're going to go in and do that. So um, our offense is very strong, but if we don't have that first ball contact, it's, it's not strong. And we're still learning that every day because we still are kind of young. So. And that, that, that's scary for, for anyone that has to play you guys too. Like you're still kind of young, you know, yeah. um, you talked about, you talked about the 88 and how it's going to be a little bit more competitive this year, but 
you guys have won three in a row and you've only lost one game in the, in that in that span. What's it kind of been like to sit back and watch the dominance that you guys have had in the league? And and do, do you think you ever take that for granted a little bit uh, with with winning so much in the in the league? Um, I don't know if I would say we take it for granted um, because the girls know on every night we have a target on our back, no matter if we're playing an NEA game or, you know, a district semi or an out of conference game, we have a target on our back and the girls know that every night we have to show up and perform to the best of our abilities. Um, like I said, we are young, so we do have to work more in our mental state and it, at any given day, you can be the most talented team. And if you don't have energy and mental fo focus, you're not going to come out on top. <laughs> and we, we experienced that last year when we did lose one, one game and that still, you know, burns me very badly, <laughs> but we, we didn't show up and that's that. I think they learned that. Now what, you know, you never want to lose a game, but did it take a little bit of pressure off? You know, the streak is gone and you don't have to worry about that talking about that every night. You know, I felt like every player profile, we were talking about the long streak and now all of a sudden, you know, you can, you can kind of relax a little bit and, and that pressure gets off your shoulder a little bit. Uh, yes and no. Um, I think the girls like the pressure because I think it makes them work harder. Um, but I do know, you know, we were expected to play perfect every single game. I didn't expect them to play perfect every single game, but I felt like other coaches and teams expected us to play perfect every single game, every single point. And, you know, I think, again, it made them realize that we are human. We we cannot show up one night and not come out on top. And we did experience that last year, but I think it just put it more into perspective for them that, you know, again, they have to show up every single night. They can't take days off, plays off, points off. They can't do that. One of the overarching themes last year, talking to your girls was the home court advantage that you guys have, especially early in the season when it gets really hot in that <laughs> gym. Talk about that. And then talk about summers in that gym and what it's like Ooh. to build conditioning in that gym you got and really what kind of home court advantage it really is. Yeah. Um, so we have been experiencing that a lot this summer. <laughs> um, our gym, even last night at our open gym, um, we were sweat, the girls were sweating. I was sweating. I mean, it was bad, but I think again, it makes it makes us tougher because again, when we go into air conditioning, we're like, Oh my gosh, it feels so wonderful in here. But <laughs> um, I think it does prepare us for to play in the worst conditions because, you know, any team coming into our gym, I always say, I'm so sorry, it's so hot in here. You guys need ice, you need towels, mop, whatever. Please just let me know because we get it. <laughs> How many times do you see, like really teams, maybe real, be a real competitive two sets, but you can tell other teams in that gym are just losing their conditioning late in sets. I mean, is it a real advantage that you see more often than people would think that teams are kind of losing their conditioning late in late in volleyball matches? Um, probably. Yeah. Um, it, I mean, I think it does definitely help us because we know what it's like to practice in that gym for two, two and a half hours. We know what it's like to condition in that gym. So I think my girls are just used to it. Their bodies get used to it, but I can tell you like the first couple of weeks of like open gym, the girls are sucking wind and <laughs> they're sweating pretty bad. So yeah, I definitely did. I definitely think it does help us a lot. Um, so yes and no. I mean, I think any team who is mentally tough can push through that. So now one of the things you missed last year was the community outreach and the community support of Lakeview volleyball. I know how proud Lakeview is of your program and now you get to have gyms full of fans again. What's that going to be like to, to see the support of the community firsthand and be able to kind of feed off the energy of crowds? Um, well, let's hope that we get it, you know, because the numbers are rising again. So good Lord, let's hope. Knock on please. I'll knock for you. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, it was definitely really different. Even like last year in preseason when we had to do two cohorts of girls, um, that was very different. Um, it was so weird. And, you know, not having – all the fans in there, it is hard. And, you know, we did have a lot of fans follow us through social media, especially on your platform. So thank you for that. Um, but they definitely, um, the girls are definitely excited to have people come back in again. It was really sad that we had to limit tickets last year and grandparents couldn't come to one game that the parents could come to and, you know, they couldn't have the student section. So, you know, we're really hoping this year that it comes back because everybody thrives in that experience um, with the audience and things like that. Like even I was watching um, an interview with Matt Anderson the on the men's uh, USA team. And he said, it's such a weird experience to be here without fans and family, but 
we still have to perform. So, and that was our message to the girls last year. No matter where you are, what time of day it is, who's there, you have to perform. So we hope they get to come back. <laughs> How cool is it uh, in an in a, in a, in a Olympic season to kind of be able to watch your sport on the Olympic stage and be able to watch the best of the best of the best compete for their countries and be able to kind of tell the girls at practice, hey, go go watch this game tonight and really become students of the game and nothing's going to raise your IQ better. Right. Actually, this morning, the women just got done playing um, on USA. Uh, <laughs> they, uh, I texted it in our group me that I have with my players, um, and I said, hey, volleyball's on. You better want to get up and go watch it. Um, you know, we don't really get to see it on TV as much, especially last year. We didn't really get to see a whole lot of it because – college didn't really have a season last year so it was really i mean i love watching the olympics i watch them all the time i'll stay up till two three in the morning watching it so <laughs> but it is cool now you open your season with crestview on yes. august 21st what a big kind of match just to open the season and expose your your girls to to a high quality competition it was a great match last year uh and now you get to go and and meet them again what's it like opening the season with such a tough tough opponent um well I really wanted to play Crestview again this year. Like you said, they're an amazing, amazing program. Um, the coaches there and the players there are just amazing. Um, I really wanted to play like open with them because I think my girls need that op that eye opening experience, and they want they want revenge on them. Um, healthy competition again. Um, they definitely want them um, because last year we didn't perform our best in that game. I mean, Cressy outplayed us, no no doubt about it. But even watching our game footage, I was seeing mistakes being made by the girls that I never saw them make all season. So, <laughs> you know, it's kind of frustrating in that sense because I don't think we gave them our best shot. So, you know, we're excited to play them. We we can't wait to play them. Um, so we're, we're hoping for a better outcome this year. <laughs> What kind of things change when August 2nd rolls around and the official practices start and you guys really can start taking things a little bit seriously preparing for that match? Um, the girls know that when season starts, that season starts, that's our main focus. They know that the time they step in the gym to the time that they leave, that we're focused hundred percent. You know, we have a tough scrimmage schedule coming up too. Um, we have a scrimmage at Boardman and a scrimmage with Fitch and, um, I host a rest clinic every year. Um, so, and we have tough teams coming in. So I think those are going to help us prepare as well. Um, but again, we can prepare them as much as we want, but if they don't show up mentally, you know, there's nothing we can do about that. So we really focus a lot on mental toughness during like actual opening season. You know, we push the girls to their frustration breaking point and make them work through it. So want to talk a little bit about Maggie Pavlansky because we, we mentioned her at the top before you came on. What a setter, maybe one of the best setters in the area. And she's still young. I mean, she's a mm -hmm. junior, right? Junior this yes. year. Yep. Uh, what's it like having such a great talent and knowing that you have her for another two seasons as well? Maggie is a workhorse. She, she just, she embraces the team leadership role. She is like the mother hen of the group. <laughs> she really, um, make sure the girls are taken care of. She keeps them in line. Um, Maggie just shows up every day and works and works and works. And, you know, again, starting having her start as a freshman setter and taking on that leadership role under Lexi Inman, and then, you know, learning from her sister, Annie, and having Lainey there, I think that they've helped coach her in that role. Um, and, you know, she runs a great offense. Uh, she's gone to a bunch of setter camps this summer to get better. Um, so she wants to get better for her team, and she wants to get better for her um, herself and her team and you know she always puts her teammates first so i'm excited to have her back for two more seasons so you know i mean it's always great when you have your returning setter you know i tell her she's our quarterback so it's just like getting your starting quarterback back you know every year so we're excited to have her back again for the next two years <laughs> i don't want to bring up dark dark memories but notre dame cathedral latin is always looming for you guys in the tournament and i know it's one of those things that you just kind of what what steps do you think you guys have to take to start to maybe knock that monkey off your back a little bit? I know that would make you the happiest person in the world to, to be able to compete with them and then knock them off to, to get that monkey off your back. Mm -hmm. uh, we just have to stay in shape during season. You know, it's a, it doesn't seem like a long season, like month wise, but I mean, there's some weeks that we have three, four games and then we have a try match on the weekend. Um, so I think this year we definitely ran out of gas last year. Um, the girls were just tired physically, mentally, emotionally. Um, but uh, I don't know. It's just we have our district playoffs have like the top teams in the state. 
And it's, that's one thing that's frustrating, but we love looking forward to that every year because we, we know we can do it. So we just have to, again, be mentally there. I think last year we kind of mentally shut down a little bit, but hopefully this year we can get through that mentally more than, than physically. You brought up the, the, the strain of the season and how you could have four games in a week. What's that? I mean, you don't get a lot of practice time during the week. I mean, you have a no. game on Monday, Tuesday, then you'll have another game on Thursday, maybe one on Saturday. That's two spots in the gym that you get to work on stuff. How mm-hmm. important is it for volleyball players to really be able to kind of coach themselves and make their own corrections from one night to another when they don't get a practice in between games? It's very important. And, you know, the girls, all the girls on my team are very respectful and they listen to what we have to tell them. Again, we have three sets of eyes this year. We're very lucky. We have three sets of eyes in the gym this year to really help them. And I think that's really helped us um, so far in preseason. And then, you know, once August 2nd rolls around, I think it's going to make it even better. Um, But our girls are open to any correction that we give them. And, you know, as teammates, they tell each other all the time, hey, hit line, hit cross. Their setters, you know, cheating, hit to the one spot. So, like, the girls help each other as well, which is really – that's a great teammate. So so before I let you go, you got to let you know that the the social media presence of Lakeview Volleyball is always fun to follow. Uh, <laughs> you make that a priority. I know you run that page, and you guys are, are always fun to watch. What do you think that does for your team to have that kind of social media platform and, and be able to share with the community about what you guys are doing? Um, well, it is a mystery person who runs the Lakeview oh. page. It may not be me. Yes, no, it I'm just Did I just ruin the mystique? <laughs> it's okay. Don't worry about it. No worries. Um, well, we love when Colin Chadwick comes in and takes pictures. He is the main reason why I can run that social media page. And props to him because he makes it out to every single Lakeview sport, whether it's a middle school game or a freshman football game, he makes it out to every sport. Um, So he really helped me run that social media page, but the girls love it because they get to see how excited they look. And, you know, even as a coach, I can use it as a coaching tool because I can say, Hey, look, in this picture, you know, your platform was not down pointed to the target. You jumped way too early. You weren't pressing on your block. So it actually helps me as well. But yeah, I like, I like keeping the girls on their toes and like saying fun things to them. And, you know, I think it just makes it for like a team bonding experience. And I think it's fun because social media is so present now today. So, you know, and even your platform that you use, it was great. The girls loved it. They were so excited when they got to do interviews with you. And, you know, our community was so excited that we had so many girls go on and do it. So, I mean, that's always fun for them. So. Saw an ominous note on that, on that Instagram page that said, you have been warned. Yes. Oh, and I was God. like, whoa. <laughs> so every year they have a couple team sleepovers, and every year I will wake up to the front of my house being decorated. So <laughs> years past, I've had forks in my yard. I had wrapping paper over my windows and my door. I'm trying to think what else I had. Um, the one year they actually did the wrong house, so that was not mm-hmm. good. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think what else. I had toilet paper the one year. I had hot dogs in my yard the one year. So, I mean – they put that note on there just to keep me on my toes because I figured I was going to wake up to something, but you know, they were trying to be clever and mysterious. So we'll see. (laughs) We'll see. You'll, you'll keep us updated. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Thank you so much for joining us today. It was great to hear from you. We definitely look forward to covering like the volleyball more this season. And uh, we look forward to, to seeing your success on the court. Well, thank you so much. And again, thank you um, for putting our sport out there and making it very popular in the Valley. Again, it's wonderful to see. And yeah, we hope we, represent our community and our school system very well this year. So thank you so much and go dogs. (laughs) No doubt about that coach. Uh, It was good to hear from you. Yes, you too. Thank you so much.